capitalism does not permit an even flow of economic resources, with this system a small privileged few are rich beyond conscience, and almost all others are doomed to be poor at some level. That's the way the system works, and since we know that the system will not change the rules, we are going to have to change the system. At every point in human history, people have publicly and boisterously claimed that the current system is the best system, and there will be no better system. Kings and queens would proudly proclaim supreme autocratic power by divine rights, with their subjects having no rights to limit their power. Monarchs were chosen by God himself, and therefore absolute monarchy was seen as the one and only true way of ruling a nation. Feudal lords would openly proclaim that they were the protectors of the peasantry, that is, the working class who swore allegiance to their lord. Feudalism was by far the most fair and efficient way to manage society. But in reality, peasants were being exploited for their labour, and were kept in line through strong-arm tactics and threats of violence. Unsurprisingly, these systems failed, or at the very least, evolved. Their proponents were wrong. There is always a better system. It's just that at any point in history, it's very hard for people to see. Currently, the world is pretty much in a universal state of capitalism. Even the biggest communist countries are still essentially capitalist. Proponents argue that capitalism is the best system that has ever existed, and they may well be right. It is the most efficient and fairest system for all in society. That sounds very much like the ruling kings of old. Of course it's not the best system, just as feudalism wasn't the best system. The difference between feudalism and capitalism is that workers in a capitalist society are in theory free to work for themselves, or for others as they choose. But in reality, most workers have as little control over their lives as did their feudal counterparts. Essentially, in a capitalist system, we choose our lords instead of them being chosen for us, at least to some extent. If you work for a company, you must do what the company asks of you. Failure to do so will result in you losing your job and income, potentially sending you and your family into poverty. Capitalism, in my opinion, is just a nicer version of feudalism. We are essentially peasants in suits. Of course the ruling class will have us believe that this is the best system. Why? Because they maintain control, and from their perspective, that's what this is all about. Control and power. But for the majority of people, capitalism does not serve their best interests. It's basically just feudalism in disguise, except perhaps we have nicer shelters and more food, if you can call what we eat food. You are still bound to work for your rich masters, whether that be your boss or your mortgage lender. You are no more free than, say, a cow put out to pasture. That is, you're free to roam around and eat as long as your boss gives you permission. Excuse me, sir, could I please have some time off over Christmas? Well, we're kind of busy over Christmas with the new merger, but things should settle down by about February. You can have some time off after that, okay? Okay, sir. But just like all other systems that came before it, capitalism too will someday die. It won't be a quick transition, just as feudalism didn't disappear overnight, but it will happen eventually. People are already becoming fed up. The wealth divide is growing. The super-rich are getting too greedy. The peasant class are getting poorer. Something is bound to change. But what will change? What will replace capitalism? Here's my prediction. Eventually, the need for money will disappear. I'm not talking about cash, I'm talking about the concept of money. If there's no need for money, there'll also be no need for paid employment. How will money disappear? Well, with the continuous rise of technology year on year, eventually most physical and laborious jobs will no longer be performed by people. There'll be a time when food production is 100% automated. Solar-powered drone pickers and planters, robotic packers and driverless trucks, vertical farms on every street corner. There will be a time when the cost of food production becomes pretty much negligible. The same will happen with transport. They'll be free to use driverless transport networks. You just pull out your phone, push a button, and within a minute or two, a driverless electric vehicle picks you up. In this environment, who would bother owning a car, especially if laws have been put in place to actively disincentivize car ownership? When it comes to shelter, there will probably be a time when quality housing is provided to anybody who requires it. I know it's hard to see now in our current climate of unaffordable housing and property bubbles, but I think people in the future will look back at our housing system and laugh. 
What do you mean people had to get into debt to buy a house? Didn't everybody just have a house? In our current capitalist world, if somebody is unable or unwilling to work and has no income or family to support them, they often have no other option but to sleep rough on the street. Homelessness is a real issue in our modern capitalist world. Tell me one country that doesn't have a homelessness problem. But yet, at any point in time, we have an abundance of shelters simply sitting unoccupied, either at somebody's investment property or an unused government building or a holiday home. We have plenty of food to go around as well, but if somebody walks into a shop hungry and with no money asking for food, the inevitable reply will be, sorry mate, we're not a charity. People may even call the police on you. To be fair, in many countries, it turns out being a prisoner is often better than being homeless. At least you get free food and a place to sleep. From this, you may even argue that capitalism is actively encouraging criminal behaviour, at least to some extent. The point is, there's plenty of resources in our world to go around, but as a rule, capitalism does not give stuff away. Proponents often say that capitalism is the best way to distribute these resources, but I say, that's rubbish. If it were the best way to distribute resources, then surely everybody would have all the resources they need. Obviously, that's not the case. Something is broken, and therefore there is no doubt in my mind that capitalism, like every other system that came before it, will be replaced. As I said before, it won't be a quick transition, but it will happen gradually over the upcoming decades. Or if you're more pessimistic, over the upcoming centuries. Whether I'm still alive to see a moneyless society, I don't know, but I'm fairly certain that's where we're ultimately headed. Some of you might be asking, if there's no money, what will motivate people to do anything? Well, first of all, what is money? It's really just an idea. The physical paper and coins that we pass around to each other have no inherent value. Governments have given it value, but as we all know, you can't eat money. It's all kind of random anyway. If you happen to be born in a poor country or into a poor family, you have no choice in that matter. The same is true if you're born into wealth. So if money is just one idea of many, then surely there are lots of other ways to motivate people. In my experience, I feel that most, if not all, people have a natural drive. They certainly don't just do things because they get paid for it. In a moneyless society, there will still be people who want to become engineers and programmers and all the rest of it. There'll be people who want to make YouTube videos, or their equivalent, just for the fame, attention or recognition. Whether or not they have to pay for their food or computer does not change the fact that they want to make YouTube videos. Sure, in a moneyless society, you might get some people who just want to hang about and play video games all day long, but I think that's certainly the minority, and I think most people would grow bored of that quite quickly. People will still be motivated to get out and do stuff just as they are today. People will still want to lose weight or become fit. Some people will still want to teach others how to lose weight or become fit. Architects will still enjoy designing buildings. Computer programmers will still enjoy programming computers. It's just that there will be no need for them to pay for their electricity and internet usage. I think one could argue that a moneyless society would be much more efficient than a capitalist one. Think about it. There'll be a whole raft of industries that are no longer required. Things like banks and insurance companies, the tax office, Centrelink. Nobody will need to go on welfare because everybody will already have access to everything they need. If you look at the Australian Stock Exchange, a good proportion of the major companies are in finance. In a moneyless society, they'll no longer be required. There'll be no need for physical labour as all physically demanding jobs will have been automated. Communal and societal goals will become much more prominent. What should we do to improve the city's recycling program? How do we make the transport network more efficient? As there is no money, technology would be in the public domain, essentially eliminating the need for trade secrets and intellectual property rights. Duplication of effort would be minimised. Companies would no longer need to fight each other in long drawn out legal battles, which only puts more pressure on our already strained legal system. Ultimately, people will work together to make the best phone, the fastest computer, or the lightest aeroplane components. In our current system, companies actively don't work together. In some cases, they actually go out of their way to hinder their competitors. Think advertising campaigns and legal battles. This is not efficient and is a complete waste of resources. Anyway, that's my prediction of our post-capitalist society. I know what many of you are saying. It's too idealistic. Humans are greedy. A free society will never work. Some people will just take, take, take and destroy it for the rest of us. Perhaps. 
Perhaps not. I feel that over the upcoming decades, during the gradual transition away from capitalism, people's ideals will also change. Just as a peasant in a feudal society could never have predicted that people will one day have work rights and employee entitlements, so too many of us can't foresee a society which provides everything to its citizens without monetary exchange. A peasant could never have predicted that one day workers will be allowed to walk into a so-called supermarket and buy a block of delicious chocolate for literally a couple of minutes' wage. So what do you think? Is there some merit in this prediction? Do you think capitalism will eventually die off? If so, what comes next? Mm -hmm.